Hello and welcome to another video by the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video of my Getting to Know WebCore series, we will be setting up a WebCore piston to help monitor when a washer and dryer is done running its cycle, as well as send an alert when the cycle is completed. This seems to be an often asked question online and something I've been meaning to set up for a while now. The biggest reason for this is so we can get a text message when the washer is done, so that the wet clothes don't get left sitting for too long to get moldy, because while the washer will make sounds when it's done, it's not that loud. There are a few different ways to get this functionality, such as using door sensors, activity sensors, or even some model washers and dryers have the ability to be smart appliances. But for me, I plan on using two Z-Wave Plus power switches. When picking out smart switches, you'll want to make sure that they support power monitor reporting. This will allow for us to actually trigger our piston. They will also need to support enough amps for your appliances. For this, I checked the manual for my washer and dryer. And you'll also want to make sure they will fit where you plug them in. I had originally looked into the typical square ones from SmartThings, but I can't fit two on the same receptacle. Also, I'd like to mention that my dryer is gas, so the electrical pole is a lot lower compared to an electric dryer. If you have an electric dryer, you will probably need to look into a different option. With all that out of the way, let's jump into the fun. To get started, we will need to know what power is drawn for both the washer and dryer. This information will be pulled from our two smart switches and will allow us to better determine when the washer and dryer are actually running and when they are not. You can simply either watch the power draw fluctuations live on the Smart app, or even go back into SmartThings after a cycle and scroll through all the power events. But for me, I wanted an easy and quick way to look through all the power events to make an accurate determination on what my triggers will need to be. So for this, I'm using a Smart app called Simple Event Logger. You will have to manually install it, and it's something I won't be going over in this video, but I will have a link to the SmartThings community thread on it in the description below. Going through the spreadsheet that is created by the Simple Event Logger Smart App, we can see that the power fluctuates a lot, and even goes to zero at times. Because of this, a simple trigger of power going to zero won't work for turning off, and it seems like some power is used when changing settings. For this piston, I really want to have it trigger when the washer is actually running, so I think I will do a trigger for 50 watts or more for if the washer is running. Taking a look at the power draw towards the end of the cycle, we can see that the washer draws a little bit of power at the end to play the end cycle chime. Because I don't want the clothes to sit for too long after being washed, I'm going to use a trigger of below 10 watts for 30 seconds. I could probably be a bit more aggressive with this, but I don't think it's needed. We'll need to get the same information for the dryer as well. Taking a look at a cycle, I think the same triggers of 50 watts and less than 10 watts for 30 seconds will work for the dryer as well. With the information for our different triggers, we can go ahead and create the piston. To do this, go into the WebCore dashboard and click on Create a New Piston. Select Create a Blank Piston and give your piston a name. We will first need to create a few global variables. The reason we'll be doing global variables and not local is because I plan to eventually add these into my Notification Center piston and that requires global variables. You are welcome to just use local variables if you desire. This piston will have four variables. One for the washer being filled or not, one for the washer state, one for the dryer being filled or not, and one for the dryer state. To create the global variables, click on Add a New Global Variable on the top right of the piston editor. In the window that opens up, click on the top drop-down menu and select Boolean for the first variable. This one will be called Dryer Empty, and we can pre-populate it as false. Click on Add More and continue the steps to create the string variable, Dryer Run State, the boolean variable washer empty and the string variable washer run state next will be to add in our different if statements the first if statement will be to mark the washer as running if it goes above a specific threshold and to alert so click on add a new statement under execute and select add an if from the new window that opens up, click on Add a Condition. Next, we will select the smart switch the washer is plugged into and then select the gray drop-down menu next to it. From here, select Power. Under Comparison, we will pick Raises Above and put 50, and click on Add More. From here, click on Add Condition and then change Physical Device to Variable. Next, select your variable of washer run state and for comparison select is not.
with a value of run. Click on add. After, click on add a new statement under then, and then click on add an action. Leave location alone for devices and click on add a task. In the new window that opens, select set variable. Choose wash or empty. Set it to false and click on add more. We will do the same thing again, but this time select the variable washer run state and set it to run. After, we will click on add more. Next will be to add notifications. You can send a push notification, which will go to all devices that have the SmartThings app installed, an email, or a text message through SmartThings. For this piston, I am going to do a text message and a push notification. First, I'll select send push notification, and in the message section, I'll put in what I want the push notification to say. Once done, we can click on Add More one more time, and this time add our text notification. Our text notification will be the same as our push notification, so you will enter the message you want and add in a 10-digit phone number or phone numbers separated with a comma that you want the text message to be sent to. Once done, click on Add to add all the actions into the if statement. Next will be to add a new if statement very similar to the last if statement. This if statement will be triggered if the dryer power rises above 50 watts and if the dryer run state variable is not run. When the condition is met, the dryer run state variable will be set to run and the dryer empty variable will be set to false, along with sending a text message and push notification. To do this, create a new if statement that matches the previous if statement we created. But instead of referencing the washer power switch, we will reference the dryer power switch as well as the dryer run state and dryer empty variables. Feel free to slow down the video or pause it if you need to, I'll be more than glad to wait. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be notified when I release new videos such as this WebCore Piston tutorial. After our dryer start if statement is complete, we will add an if statement inside it, creating a nested if statement. This nested if statement will mark the washer as being in a stop state as well as empty. To do this, click on add a new statement between end with and else, and click on add an if. From here, click on add condition. Next, change physical devices to variable, select washer run state, and set the comparison to is with a value of done. Click on Add. Click on Add a new statement under Then, and click on Add an action. Leave location alone here and click on Add a task. In the new window that opens up, select Variable, select the Wash or Empty variable, and set it to True. Click on Add More, and this time set the variable Washer Run State to Stop. Click on add more, and now add your text message and push notifications for the washer being empty. Once done, click on add. The next two if statements will be for when the washer or dryer are done with their cycle. This will be determined by if the switch's power stays below 10 watts for 30 seconds and if the appliance connected to it is in the run state. If it does, the appliance will have its run state set to done and notifications will be sent out. To do this, create a new if statement. And for the condition, select the washer smart switch. Next, select the gray drop down menu next to the device and select power. For the comparison, we will select stays less than, and in the first value put 10, and in the second value put 30. Next, click on add more and click on add a condition. In this window, change physical devices to variable and select the washer run state. Set the comparison to is, and fill in run for the value. Click on add. Next, click on add a statement under then, and click on add an action. 
Click on Add a Task in the new window and then select Set Variable. For the variable, select Washer Run State and in the value section, put Done. Next, click on Add More and enter in your notifications. Once done, click on Add. The next step will be to create the same if statement but for the dryer. Again, I won't be covering how to make this if statement in its entirety, but feel free to slow down this portion of the video or pause as needed. After the dryer if statement is completed, we have just a few more if statements for the piston. The next one we are going to create is going to be for if either smart switch is turned off. While I don't expect it to happen, it's going to be possible and I would like for a way for them to recover on their own. I'll also have the piston notify me if they're turned off and recovered. To do this, click on add a new statement and pick add an if. Next select add a condition and on the new screen we are going to select both of our smart switches. With both switches selected, click on the gray dropdown next to them and select Switch. Under Comparison, select Changes to, select Off, and click on Add. Back on the Piston Editor, click on Add a new statement under them, and pick Add an If. Next, select Add a Condition, and then select the Washer's Smart Switch. Next, select the Switch option in the gray box next to it, and select Is Off for the comparison. Click on Add. Next, under Then, click on Add a New Statement and select Add an Action. Under Devices, select the Washer Smart Plug and click on Add a Task. In the new window that opens up, select Turn On and then click on Add More. Next, you can add in your notification messages. After you're done adding in your notifications, click on Add. Next, click on Add a new statement directly under the if statement we just created. In the new window that opens up, select Add an if and then select Add a condition. Next, select the dryer smart plug and select the switch option in the gray box next to it. For the comparison of this condition, select Is off and then click on Add. After, click on Add a new statement under Then and select Add an action. Under Devices, select the dryer smart plug and click on Add a task. In the new window that opens up, select Turn On and then click on Add More. Next, you can add in your notification messages. After you're done adding in your notifications, click on Add. And our final statement in this piston is not actually an if statement, but a timer. This timer will go off every 15 minutes and send a notification if the washer is not empty. For me, this is the biggest reason why I did all of this, so that way if I'm really busy, when the washer goes off, I'll be reminded until I get the laundry out, so the clothes don't sit too long and get musty. To do this, click on Add a Statement, and click on Add a Timer. Next, change the Every value to 15 minutes, or whatever value you want, and click on Add. In the next window, click on Add an If, and click on Add a Condition. Next, change physical devices to variable and select the washer empty variable. And set the comparison to is false. Click on add more. Once again, click on add a condition, change physical devices to variable and select washer run state variable. And set the comparison to is done. Then click on add. Next, click on Add a New Statement under Then and click on Add an Action. In the new window that opens up, leave Location alone and click on Add a Task. From here, set up your notifications you want to have sent every 15 minutes for if the washer has laundry in it. And that's it! 
We have created a pretty complex piston that will track the state of our washer and dryer, notify us when they stop and start, and be notified until we take the laundry out of the washer. So let's save our piston and see how it works. Turning off the washer power immediately turns it back on and I get notified on my phone. Doing the same to the dryer gives the same result. Next, let's load up the washer and start a cleaning cycle. After it starts for a few moments, we should get notified on the phone saying the cleaning cycle has started. Great! Once the washer finishes, we should see a notification that the washer's cleaning cycle finished. If we let it sit for a long enough time, we'll see notifications every 15 minutes. Now, let's move the laundry to the dryer and start the dryer. After a few moments, we'll see a notification that the dryer is running and we'll get notified that the washer is empty. This will also stop the notification every 15 minutes about the washer. So we were able to create a state tracking piston for our washer and dryer and use the different states to notify us when our washer or dryer did something, as well as remind us to remove our wet laundry from the washer. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. I'd also love to hear about any new pistons you recently created or want to make soon, so let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.